I'm very delighted to introduce Reverend Mitri Al-Rahib, who is the founder and the president of this university, a dream that was constructed step by step and foot by foot in order to accommodate artists, scholars, and um, also creative writers in this premises, which is Dar al Kalima University, the only university that is specialized in cultural and art in Palestine. I think Dr. Rahib continued to do a magnificent, magnificent job in terms of combining academia with the memory and the future, bringing up the new generation of leaders of the Palestinian artists and creative writers. This is a lot to say about the work that he introduced through his academic path alongside the administrative part in terms of the combination of theology and politics. Uh, his latest book, Decolonizing Palestine, Land, People and the Bible, was recently published in which he discusses the influence of the biblical influence of politics into colonizing Palestine and he proposed his own theme of analysis of the land, the people, the culture, and obviously a future of Palestine. Dr. Mitri Abrahim, please. Thank you, Dr. Rehab. And uh, I tell you, it's so difficult to speak after Nadir. So I think we all need like a deep breath, uh, a meditation now, <laughs> time to just to digest what Nadir uh, told us. But uh, what I'm really interested in, I, uh, I, I, um, I called, uh, I titled my presentation, my short presentation, The Software That Powers the Occupation. I think after you being here two days, going into the north, visiting some of the destroyed villages, hearing all of these presentations, including this latest one, I guess you ask yourself, how can this continue? Why is the world so silent? Why? How is it possible that in the 21st century settler colonialism is possible? And I think it's possible because of this. And this is what I, I would like. I, I chose seven reasons why this is possible uh, regarding the software. Just because I was given 10 minutes, so I thought seven, I, I could do seven and 10. Okay? So. The Israeli settler colonial project is enabled and maintained by two things. One is the hardware. It's all of these F-35 latest technology coming from the US. It's the submarine coming from Germany, etc., etc. That's the hardware. But we are, what we don't talk about a lot is the software. And you know we are living in the age of software. But well, the software is even more important than the hardware. Uh, and I'm interested more in the software as, as a theologian. And um, so how is the software working, which actually enables all of this to happen, and people seem to be OK with it? So the first element of the software is Christian Zionism. And remember, Christian Zionism actually uh, it started in 19th century, mid 19th century. Actually, the roots goes back to the Middle Age, but really it became politically interesting mid 19th century. Uh, and one of the major uh, players was Lord Earl Shaftesbury, uh, and he wrote this in 1854. Now, 1854 is important because that was the Crimean uh, Creek, uh, Crimean War. Uh, here and in, in, the, in, in the region and uh, so he says the Turkish Empire is in rapid decay every nation is restless all hearts expect some great things no one can say that we are anticipating prophecy the requirement of it seems nearly fulfilled so this is the kind of theological software thinking that what's happening here is the fulfillment of prophecy now, you think this was 19th century. Last month, I was on Zoom call with, uh, with uh, 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 a member of, um, a Congress member in Atlanta on Zoom. And he started 
I was thinking we will talk about politics and he started to talk about po a prophecy. So this, this thing is still going on. And remember, Christian Zionism was preceded Jewish Zionism and preceded actually the colonization of Palestine through the British. So the software, that's the software. That, those are the ideas that enabled actually the occupation of Palestine. And so he continues, Syria, including Palestine, is wasted without an inhabitant. That's, you remember, settler colonialism, empty land we talked about. These vast and fertile regions will soon be without a ruler, without a known and acknowledged power to claim domination. So the software is put actually in service of the hard power of colonization. That's very important. So it's not innocent religious thing. There is an imperial actually mindset behind it. So that's the first one. The second one, I continue actually, that's a continuation of the quote I started with. He, say, he continues saying, the territory must be assigned to someone or other. Can it be given to any European potentate, to any American colony, to any Asiatic sovereign or tribe? Are these aspirants from Africa uh, to hasten a demand on the soil from Hamad to the river of Egypt? Here he's referring to Muhammad Ali. No, 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 he's saying there is a country without a nation, a nation without a country. His, once, his, his own once loved, nay, still loved people, the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What's interesting here, actually, is that he mentioned four groups of people. European, American, Asiatic, and African. And this actually was the subtle scientific racism because it was uh, Linné, which you see there in that book, that he actually, uh, he, he, he divided the world in four groups and uh, according to uh, biology. And why I'm saying this, because we always think it's only theology that weaponized. All science is weaponized. Here, biology. So this is why I had here this quote. So, but then, the whole Holy Land archaeology and tourism is part of the software, and we're going to hear tomorrow about that, I think, more. So, uh, there is a long history of digging Palestine and digging for the Bible. Uh, Nader I mentioned now, Albright, just as one example. Imagine, 1958, an American archaeologist, Albright, you know, the Albright Institute in East Jerusalem is named after him. He was meeting every week together with Ben-Gurion, a Haroni archaeologist and few others, discussing, interestingly enough, the book of Joshua. And the book of Joshua actually is a blueprint for settler colonialism, if you want. And they were discussing this question, and they were really, there was a heated debate, Conquest comes before settlement or settlement before conquest. So should we build colonies, settlements, and then conquer with a war, or should we have a war and then start settlements? And that was the debate. But imagine, this is an archaeologist discussing this kind of thing. The software is much more spread than we think. Among theologians, I always struggle. Why do they keep talking about the Temple Mount? Why we call it the Temple Mount? I mean, you see there, there is Al-Aqsa Mosque. There is the Dome of the Rock. I mean, we saw them yesterday, right? And then, those theologians, they don't see this. They want to see what is underground. It might have been there. It might have not been there. But then we, we use this language, the software, Temple Mount. And this is, in it, there is a political claim which enables settlers to take over Al-Aqsa Mosque. So you see, that's the software. The city of David, I think uh, Nadira talked about it uh, now. 
uh, or Holy Land tourism. I think after having the service yesterday on Mount of Olives, you saw these crazy Brazilian Christian Zionists, and then we went to have lunch, and then there was this crazy Togo people from Africa, all of them wearing uh, uh, the, the, the flag of Israel. Now they are on a pilgrimage. They are not on a political tourism, but carrying that is part of the software. So that's the software. So don't come on a Holy Land trip, because that's not the Holy Land. I wish it were an oily land. We were much better on it. Or no, maybe the Americans will come again. So, no. <laughs> so, but then you have a different kind of software, not the kind of Christian Zionism of Shaftesbury. But these are liberal thinkers. Here I take theologian as a, but it's not only theologians. Uh, but I like to be self-critical uh, as theologian. These are scholars who are liberal on everything except Palestine. Except Palestine. And look at this. This is, this is an American uh, 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 post-Holocaust theologian, very liberal, uh, Paul von Buren. He's saying, I mean, it's unbelievable, but this is what the role of Christian church is to extend the revelation of the God of Israel and the healing work of God in and through Israel to the nations. Christianity should do this not only by preaching this gospel to the nations, but also by rendering service to the people of Israel. This service takes an external and internal form. Externally, the Christian church must become the extension of the anti-defamation league, combating all anti-Semitism among Gentiles. It also takes the form of defense of the state of Israel, both raising money for Israel defense and defending the state of Israel against all anti-Zionist government. All criticism of the state of Israel, whether based on alleged injustice to the Palestinians or claims that Israel is unjust to third world people, are simply lies. It is the job of the Christian church to combat all these lies against Israel being taught the truth by Jews, that is, the government of the state of Israel. This is one of the most liberal, democratic theologian, American theologian. He wrote this in the 70s, imagine. And then you have the whole thing of Orientalism uh, that uh, the Palestinian uh, Edward Said talked about. Uh, it's the way the West actually perceive us. Now, the most important thing is that uh, Edward Said didn't talk about theology, as you know. Uh, it was literature. Uh, so even in the literature, you have the software all the time going on without us sometimes actually critically thinking about. So I, you, you know a lot about Orientalism, so I will skip that. That's the sixth part, is something very important. A friend of mine, unfortunately, he diseased, he taught at Columbia, Jack Shaheen. He wrote this, uh, that, that's based on research he did, called Real Bad Arabs, Real R-E-E-L, how Hollywood verifies a people. And what he did actually, he looked at over 1,000 Hollywood films about the image of the Arab. And guess what? In 90% of these films, the Arabs were always the bad guys. Now, uh, African American experienced this until they revolt, and now it's a bit better. But what, uh, what Jack actually, the conclusion that Jack did was this, that only, interestingly enough, only Native Americans were worse in their depiction in the films than Palestinians. Hmm. Except Pocah Pocahontas. Okay, Pocahontas was. Yeah, I'm almost done. So, uh, uh, and, and, and the Jewish character in most of these films were always positive. It's the cute, smart, funny guy. It's, it, it comes in a subtle way, but all of this goes into our subconscious 
and actually that is how the software works. And now this is the latest uh, software, uh, I think, this, yeah, uh, the latest software. Israel is trying to uh, actually declare itself to be the startup nation excellence, par excellence, okay? Now, remember, uh, actually, this is only possible because of the military industry. All the startup are related to the military industry and actually to the hardware and software that Israel receives from the US for free. And because Israel is the only country in the world that is allowed to test its latest technology on real ground, meaning on real people. In Gaza, their latest weapons, this is why they have to have a war in Gaza every other year or so, and through their uh, 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 surveillance industry on us in the West Bank. That's the, you know, uh, uh, all the technology for the surveillance. So that's the latest software that is now actually Israel talks about and many people believe in, in them. You have now heads of state coming to Israel to see Israel as the startup nation. So let me conclude. If you look at all of this, the war in Palestine didn't start 48 and it didn't start 67. It's over 100 years old. And actually, Palestine is not facing Israel. Sometimes I feel that actually the Jewish people were also instrumentalized by the empire for their own uh, uh, goals. Empires, if we look at empire, and we have been talking about empire a lot, is the convergence of Economic, political, cultural, this is where the software comes, in the culture. Geographic and military imperial interests, systems and networks that seeks to dominate political power and economic wealth. This is what we have been dealing with for the last hundred years. And we are still here. We are still resilient. So, the software is important because it is the software the software is the glue that holds the empire together and, prov and provides the occupation with its soft, uh, soft power. So the software actually gives Israel the soft power and it holds the empire together. It's, you know, it's this idea of you know, democratic countries and, and civilization and, and, uh, and development and achievement. All of this is part of the software that we hear all the time and we are actually standing this development in the way. So, the last one, sometimes when people ask me what is your profession, it's very difficult to say, pastor, you know, president of university. Now I try to say, I am actually in the business of software cracking. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, I tell you and our friends, it's really high time to crack this software and I think this conference will hopefully contribute to that. Thank you very much.